So my whole uh, career has been with a reporter. As a Time Magazine contract person, I had uh, essentially to serve a word-driven publication. That's pre-internet. And most writers, you can uh, almost officially say, have a more two-dimensional uh, view on a situation and a news story, and the photographer has to add the illustration. But with that comes a collaboration. And uh, as words became more easily transferable, so did imagery. And we could put a photo essay up on the web. It didn't require 10 extra pages in a magazine, which is how I learned how to do it. But the access for photography changes, and it never took space away from words. I think some writers always had a problem that if there's a photo on a page, the words disappear. That's not always the case. They give it more space, but Alan, I think you might have heard of that kind of <laughs> potential run-in with pictures. Perfect. Absolutely, but I, as a reporter, I was always um, really helped by photographers who would actually conceptualize the story somewhat differently from the way I would. Reporters are looking for paragraphs. They're opener. They're closing. Photographers are looking for opening pictures also. But ask a reporter what they're thinking at any given time, and they're thinking word groups, some different angle, some adjective, some adverb. And photographers are basically doing the same thing, but in, with a different perspective. So it's often, I found, better to take separate cars than have one car, so you don't end up slugging each other by the end of the day. But, uh, you know, why are you stopping here? There's a photograph. Who cares? That's usually the comment from a reporter. Oh, I don't say that. Oh, well, no, no, no. it's quite, it's been said. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I think you should talk about is when I don't I, want to talk I, and interview just, somebody that I can't take a picture of. So that, that whole conflict ends up, you, you get two cars. Fair enough. Right. Uh, two cars are only better than one. So that's called a collaboration. <laughs> two cars. <laughs> but why did the switch to television? See, then it becomes the, the uh, issue of putting those two mindsets together. Yes. And, and that's why I think it's really helpful for you to tell them how pictures drive the, the whole story, whether it's the words or the, they embody the theme somehow, what's really important. In the end, I, I, I believe that pictures gave the writer more space. If the picture was good, the page count went up. And, and I think that is never been more true than today. The world we live in is a visual world, right? The, whatever we might think of the platform and what they're doing to the business, you know, you share and receive and you feel affected by the visuals around you. And I think the dynamic of words and pictures together will continue to evolve and change. I think there is a dynamic of working together that's super valuable because you do feed off each other in terms of yeah, the words. Yeah, the words can't just tell you what's Correct. in the picture. Correct. I mean, the, 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 there is a symbiotic relationship to words and pictures, and the story behind a photograph has a lot of value. I think what we're going to see in the coming years, you know, Bob was right, that you know, people are losing jobs and places are shrinking. At the same time, it's never been more open. The ability to connect visually with other people around the world, whether they're professionals or whether they have really a, a really awesome Instagram account in India, in New Zealand, up in Guinea. I'm from Chile. Like my family and friends in Chile and Argentina. I mean, the, the way you're connected with people and the way I think visually there's a lot more literacy today is because of all these platforms. And I think you guys are going to be the beneficiaries of whatever happens next.